Welcome to Folding Chair Theology. We're your hosts, Justin Mercier and Bruce Pagano, and this is Theology for Everyone. Welcome back to Folding Chair Theology. I'm Justin Mercier here with Bruce Pagano, and today we're going to be diving into Chapter 5, The Greatest Command, here with uh, Three Commands book, written by our, trues, uh, our truly Bruce Pagano. Um, but Bruce, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Good, man. So we haven't like talked or hung out in like two weeks. Yeah. And uh, so I'm sure we have a lot of catching up to do. Tell us about your trip. That's primarily what you're doing most of the time, right? Yeah. Uh, those we last two weeks. Recorded two Mondays ago, and then we left. Yeah. And we were gone for ten days. Yeah. And so we went to um, a little place called Winona, Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. Right across the Missouri River. Nope, Mississippi River. Uh, <laughs> from La Crosse, yeah. uh, Wisconsin. So wow. my brother-in-law and his wife live in Winona, and he works in La Crosse. Uh, so we drove. Which, yeah, I think we're going to drive anyway, um, but the stuff going on in Minneapolis, Minnesota, mm. um, probably better that we drove instead of having to fly into Minneapolis. Sure. Uh, but we also had to pick up um, my wife Sarah's mom in, um, in right outside of Rapid City, South Dakota. South Dakota, that's yes, right. So it was, uh, what, 23 hours there and 23 hours back, and um, I think we were gone 11 days, so... Yeah, we drove seven and a half hours. Stayed in Rock Springs, Wyoming, which is nothing. Like nothing. There's like a subway there. It's horrible. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we did stay next to a KFC, so that was oh, we had KFC. Um, <laughs> the two restaurants yeah. in yeah. Rock Springs, KFC and the Subway. <laughs> They're right across the street from each other. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then we, um, you know, to South Dakota and then to Winona, and that was the longest part. Nine and a half hours mm. in a car for 23 hours with a 12 and a yeah. five year old and grandma and grandma, which yeah. grandma was helpful in that. Oh, I'm sure. But I mean, the other <laughs> two, uh, as long as the DVD was playing, I think they were okay. It was getting to the DVD that oh. was a, like, I don't want to watch Spider Man again. It's my turn to pick. He's like, <laughs> Okay. Which the yeah. I don't want to watch Spider Man again was a twelve year old because the five year old just daughter oh. just just discovered Spider Man and uh. she's just like watching the Tobey Maguire ones. She's like, oh really? Yeah. Oh, like the original. So, okay. so she saw the the original one and she's watched it like nine times. Like, she <laughs> like loves it. Oh, so, um, wait. Funny enough, his his choice of movie was uh, Romeo and Juliet. Like, oh, so. Huh. Like I was like, okay, just like, like whatever, switched, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But so what, that was. Did our, you have fun though while you yeah, were there? The, the visit was a blast. The drive yeah. wasn't horrible. It was just twenty three hours. It's a long time <laughs> to be in a car, and I'm not yeah. twenty anymore. You know, like so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we had we had a blast. We just hung out. Um, his um, or my wife's brother and sister in law um, had a baby. Uh, you That's know, right. their first baby. So. Like it's ten months ago or something. Ten months ago, yeah, yeah. so ten month old Jackson, cool. um, and he's her only nephew, like her, her only oh wow niece or nephew. So yeah, um, so of course you know Grandma hadn't met him yet, and we hadn't met him yet, and so we went, and she just kind of gushed over him for four or five days, and um, you know we hit the river and paddle boarded, and, yeah. Um, Cheese? New cheese? Yep. Got some squeaky, yeah. squeaky cheese curds. I wanted, yes. to bring, I wanted to bring some back, but um, oh, yeah. we just didn't. We just didn't. It, well, it was, that would have been a good snack on the way home. Three days like. in the car. Yeah, I wouldn't have made <laughs> yeah. it, probably. Yeah, exactly. I'm with you. Um, but yeah, did cheese curds and um, yeah, just hanging out and playing and yeah, it was good. It was fun. Cool. How about you? Yeah, so, um, so two weekends ago... We, uh, I got with a group of guys and, uh, and one lady named Pam, um, and we redid an entire roof oh, for right. a family in the church. It was an older couple in the church. Yep. I, I learned later that, you know, they, they consider them like the patriarch and matriarch. I mean, they've been there for like 60 years or something like that. Right. Like long time, whatever well, it is. At least the 47 years that the church has been around or something. Yeah, 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 you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, but they, uh, um, and so I got a, a message that was like, hey, do you want to come? And one of the things that um, they 
one of our friend Matt was mm-hmm. like, hey, we're not going to have a lot of people on Friday, um, but we will have a lot more people on Saturday. So I, I asked my work, I was like, hey, I want to come uh, help on this project. So they gave me a Friday off, paid, oh, cool. the paid time off there. Sweet. And so I took the whole day Friday off. I was there for, I think, almost 11 hours. Oh, wow. Yeah, we were there a long time. And I would rather drive for 11 hours. Yeah. Well, and let me tell you, I don't know how Matt did it, but it was like 96 degrees that yeah. day. And it was the hottest day, like, so far this year or whatever. Horrible. Um, especially on the roof. I was on the roof. I told those guys, okay. I'm like, this roof ain't going to hold me. Like, I'm, no, it's not going to work. <laughs> But uh, but those if, guys. If you're not watching the video, uh, Justin's yeah. a very petite guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Big boned, I guess. Yeah. You know, yeah. like whatever it is. <laughs> um, but yeah, but there's other guys who climbed up the ladders yeah. and the roof. So I was on the bottom doing mainly hospitality stuff. So like I got cold rags to you know throw oh, cool. on their heads. I cooked the hot dogs, and then as they were ripping off the roof, I was picking it up and throwing it into the trailer to go to the dump. Oh, sweet. So, um, what we didn't know though is that there's like there was like three levels of roof on this house. Oh, basically, it sounded like, like people were just re roofing over the yes, roof, exactly. Okay. So, they ripped up one, they're like, Oh, there's another roof here, and then they ripped up another one, we're like, Oh, there's more roof. Like, so it was um, that stinks. It hadn't been re roofed in like 40 something years or something, or it had been multiple times, <laughs> yeah. And so, it was rough, right? So, we did that 11 hours on Friday. I came back Saturday morning at 5.30 in the morning. Oh. Yeah. And um, I was there from 5.30 till like almost 3. And they were still going. Um, but I went and I helped our friend Mike because he just had a baby. Oh, yeah. He was like, I need help putting together our gazebo. So I left the roofing project <laughs> and I went to the gazebo project. Nice. Yeah. And, uh, and so that was, uh, and then, and then some of the guys, um, some of the guys ended up coming, going back Sunday to finish up, to finish up. Um, and I have, I have video and, and all that kind of yeah. stuff about it. I'm all about like but, service outreach projects yeah. as a church community. Um, I don't like them. I don't <laughs> yeah. like, cause they're always yeah. construction and they're always uh, I know. cutting grass or yard work and. And it's yeah. good. It's good, honest work. Um, but I don't like people are like, "Oh, I'm mowing the lawn so zen. It's my quiet place. I love it." And I'm just like, <laughs> "Why? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's loud. It's smelly. It's sweaty. Yeah, yeah. It's hot. Well, yeah. I mean, we're not we're not mowing the grass in spring when it's exactly like, like when is there going to be a project where it's like Justin? What? We need you to go eat ice cream with this family. I'm like, right. okay, fine. Yeah, right. like this family <laughs> doesn't have anybody to eat ice cream with. <laughs> yeah, and you're just like. I'll do that. Look, I'll, I'll sacrifice them, my time. I'll buy them ice cream. Are we talking <laughs> yeah. three or four hours? I don't know. What are we yeah. talking? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so um, so we, so we, I did that. Um, and then uh, this last weekend, which was the 4th of July weekend, um, we went over to some friend's house and I played like six games of volleyball at their house. Oh, cool. And That's it was fun. great. Super fun. I did, however... Uh, smashed the ball in uh, one of our friend John uh, John's face, and I felt really bad because he said his neck was sore the next day. So, oh, it's like you getting whiplash. Yeah, it's like those videos. I know. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to, but you know, I was like, it's going so competitive. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah. So that was uh, pretty much pretty much my week. You know, just having fun, serving that sort of thing, and yeah. and we've been back. I think we. We got back last Monday. Hey, you texted me and you were like, we are recording tonight? I was like, nope. <laughs> yeah. You're like, I just not, got done driving. Not even a little bit. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, so, now, really so cool. now we're going to be recording. We should probably catch up. Like, we should probably, like... We'll do a two episode. Week, like, do a two episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, good. Well, um, I... Uh, well, I'm just throwing stuff around here. Um, I'm excited to get into this uh, chapter five of the mm-hmm. book. The greatest command. Um, I really, uh, you know, Which, we started if you're not this. familiar with that, yeah, you want to read. Yeah, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Matthew twenty two thirty seven. Um, I, I'm glad that you uh, are breaking it down this way because it's kind of like there's, like you said, with this book 
the three commands. I appreciate that you kind of broke this down individually. And so today we're going to be talking about the greatest command and then using that uh, right. uh, Bible verse there. Um, and, it, and it's called the greatest yeah. command if you're not familiar because yeah. when the Pharisees asked Jesus, hey, what are the, what's the greatest command of the law? He said, oh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yeah. And then he said, oh, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And these yeah. two commands are all of the prophets and the law. And, and, and I know we, we kind of definitely talk about, you know, that, talk about that in there. Um, do you think, uh, and I'm sure we'll kind of get in, more into this. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, and this is kind of like what I, I'm thinking is that, do you think that they were more like, because obviously he's, he's coming here and he's like, I mean, he's professing some pretty big things here. I mean, right. being the Messiah and, and like, you know, uh, and that sort of thing. It was this kind of like a, like, a, let's just test him. Let's just see. Because it's like, oh, there's all these commands. Yeah. Let's see. I, what I think, works. I think probably, yes, just because every, like, well, and I'd have to go back. It might have said that they sought to test him. Yeah. Right before that. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, almost every interaction that they had with Jesus was them trying to kind of catch him off guard or test him. Like kind of corner him. Um, and, and, and I mentioned it, I think, in in the very um, first part of this chapter is that, like, they would have known in them asking what the right answer was because they prayed it three times a day. Like, the, That's Shema, right. the Shema yeah, was their prayer, and it started, the Lord is God, the Lord is one. Yeah. You shall love the Lord your God with all, you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. they, they would have known what they were asking him and he would have known yeah. what they were asking him and they would have known what the right answer was. And so he gives them the answer they're looking for. And then like Jesus does in every situation, <laughs> yeah. he makes it this other thing. Like he expands mm -hmm. it to this other thing, you know, um, yeah. don't kill, but if you hate, you're murdering. You know, don't, yeah. don't right. lust or don't commit adultery. But if you lust, you're, you've committed adultery. Like, and any, and, and why wouldn't he do that with the the greatest part? You know, like when they're looking yeah. for the answer to what the greatest command of all the six hundred and thirteen laws are, why wouldn't he do it with that one? You know what I'm yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is yeah, um, you know, knowing that, I mean, obviously he's God, so it's like. Um, the, you know, this is a great test for him, uh, not for him, but like, you know, they're like, oh, we'll, we'll get him on this right. one. And then they, and then they're like, dang it. How do you know the answer? Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah. So and I well, really and, appreciate and, it. And, and, and we'll see it in the next chapter when we talk about the second command to love your neighbor. But I mean, like, not only were they just like, oh, you know, but they're, yeah, it, it opens up this dialogue for them to be like, okay, then who's our. Who's our neighbor? You said love our, love our neighbor. Yeah. So who's, who's our neighbor? Right. Uh, and he gets, he gets to teach, you know, in this deeper, doesn't even, like, they don't even ask. Yeah. Okay, so what does that mean to love God? You know? Yeah. Like, their concern is, oh, so you're tying loving my neighbor to this command that we acknowledge is the greatest command. Right. To love God. Um who mm -hmm. does that extend to? Like, who is the person that you're saying is my neighbor that that extends to? Oh, so, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, they were, they were, uh, they were tricky. You know, yeah. they were, they were like trying to get the gotcha. But, um, now I like this next section. It says, who is God? And, um, my follow-up question was, how do we love God? Um, and so we talked about the, the, the Shema, obviously having that, <laughs> that prayer and that sort of thing. Um, and, we, you know, you kind of go into, and I, I really, I really appreciated this is this, um, like this, this part of the, what we'll hear all the time in the church is, you know, and you should love the go Lord, your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and that sort of thing. Um, and then you kind of started talking about going into love and what it means, like with a certain level that love, like non-Christians have for love. Right. Versus what Christians have for love, and I yeah, why don't you? Uh, I'd like to hear more about that. Yeah, and and so the who is God part, um, really kind of touches back to um, if you remember when we talked about um, how we view God um, in previous chapters. Oh, right, yes, and, and the angry, angry father, father, harsh taskmaster, merciless, judge, merciless right. judge, yep. and whatever other unhealthy way that you view God. Like, there's probably a lot of them, but those are the three that. 
uh, I think I, that, that we get to see most prevalent in people's view of God. Um, certainly for me it was. Mm. Um, but the point of that is until you're able to transition um, out of a unhealthy space in how you view God mm. into a into a healthy view of God where he is a, a loving father, you know, he is this compassionate um, and, and merciful um, caretaker and um and he's a, you know, he's a compassionate inviter. Like he invites, he doesn't, he's not a taskmaster, he's an inviter. Um, until you yeah. can move to that, your your ability to understand how to love God is stunted, if, mm. if even there. Like, yeah. um, you know, your interaction with an angry father versus a loving father is completely different. Like there, there's, yeah. there, there's not an expression of love. Yeah. And that angry father, you might say, of course I love my dad. Yeah. Um, but if you look at it in a really honest way, probably not. Like, Or right. you misunderstand love. There's this really skewed, mm. unhealthy view of what love is. And so in order to get to a place where we can start talking about, okay, so how do we love God? Like Jesus mm. said, with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, what does that mean? Right. Um, right. And that has to be from a healthy view of God as a loving father, as a, as someone who invites you as uh, a compassionate caretaker yeah. um, for our wounds. Um, and that, and it seems like that's what Jesus really was coming. I mean, he was personifying is that we see oh, yeah. in the old Testament, you know, what we see is like, and I, and one of the things I think is most, what it was, it's, it was kind of confusing for me at first. And I think it's uh, confusing maybe for like a lot, especially like new Christians, that sort of thing is, this concept of fearing the Lord, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I automatically always think fearing the Lord is like, like, um, um, uh, like it would be like, how do I do like, how do I fear the Lord? And it was really like a confusing thing. Right. Um, so when we talk about like, you know, before Jesus comes. So, so where are you at with that now? Like, I mean, that's a, yeah, that's a, so where Good am I? Point. I think what I'm at now is this. So, um, as you know, I'm, I've been studying the right. book of Job, right? And um, the book of Job is so interesting, by the way. It is. Um, and I really appreciate the book of Job a lot because um, it just shows, I think the book of Job has really shown me that how the church has, what the church has been doing for the longest time. And that is when someone comes and they say like, I'm hurting and I'm, I'm down on my luck and I'm down, I'm rock bottom and that sort of thing. And instead of like the immediate, like compassion for somebody, we go, well, you probably sinned or like you need to work on your sin better. Like if you just tithe more, God would bless you more. Like, and that's kind of like why I'm really with these three friends or these three guys who come is like, here's a guy who's blameless before the Lord done nothing wrong. And they're like, not only have you, you must have sinned, but here, we're going to start making up some sins that you probably did. Right. You know, yeah. and there's even a time that Joe says, Lord, is this because of the sins of my youth? Like, like, why are you doing this to me right. you now? And, uh, and so even he's like trying to like, what in the world did I do? There's gotta be a reason. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, um, and I'm trying to see that, um, there is, um, there's a part of what Job, um, he was saying, um, so he's talking to God and, uh, he says this, so he's like, um, like you, you have decided like the numbers of months that we're going to live. You are, you know, who could ever, who could ever come against you? You're the all knowing, like who could ever present their case against you? Like, you know, you can tell the mountains to bow and the waters to rise. I mean, and and it's just like, like Lord, how in the heck am I supposed to do anything? Right. You are this like all knowing, all like, and it really kind of showed me like, oh, that's what the fear of the Lord is. Like, it's knowing that like the God who can who makes mountains bow to Him is the same God who wove me in my mother's womb. Right. And Jesus comes and says, like, I'm your comforter. I'm your, I, I, I love you. You're like, and so it's, so I've been learning more about so that. So since this is theology for everyone. Yeah. 
A new yeah. Christian comes to you and says, I, I don't understand <laughs> why I'm supposed to fear God. What do you tell them? Yeah, um, that's a good question. I think my initial response is this, is that, is that we take fear of the Lord, I think, wrong as face value. It's not this like... Would like, you say that we confuse it with being afraid of God? Yes, okay. that's what I'm saying. We're not cowering before right. the Lord like, uh, Lord, today, like when I wake up out of my pillow, I'm like, Lord, please don't kill me today. That's not like that. That's being afraid of the Lord. Right. Fear of the Lord is like, Lord, you're almighty. Like you, right. you can you can wipe this out instantly. But while I'm still here, I want to live for you. Right. And And yeah, and that's good. That's like... So I like I would say that it's a posture of understanding. Yeah. The vastness and and power and um uh the vastness and power um and and of of God. You know, so yeah. like like just as in his just as he possesses the ability to destroy not just the body but the soul. Yeah, that same power. Yeah, is offered to us uh, on a level of advocacy. Like yeah. that same power is offered to us uh, um, as a helper. That same yeah. power is offered to us as a comforter. Um, right. So, so while he can destroy the body and the soul, he can also comfort you beyond things that you wouldn't yeah. be able to be comforted beyond. Yeah. He's also he's able to love you in a way that you might that you yeah. might otherwise not ever experience love. He's able to um, give insight and wisdom on levels that that you're not able to without him. Yeah, because yeah. of his vastness and his power, and 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 that's something to be feared and awed and revered and looked at and like. I understand how yeah. big you are. Yeah, um, because it's not just about destruction. Like right. afraid is about destruction. Right, fear. Is a is just this position of understanding. Oh, you are bigger than I can even comprehend. Yeah, and I get that. Um, and and there's good in that. Yeah. So your goodness is bigger than I can understand. Your love, your compassion, your jealousy. For yeah. Me, like your justice, your wrath, like all bigger than I can understand. Yeah. Um, and 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 in that way, I bow down. I don't cower. Yeah. Cowering's to fear what bowing down is to, I mean, cowering is too afraid what bowing down is to fear. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know if that yeah. works. Does that work? Yeah. I, you know, um, someone had, had uh, made a comment. They're like, you know, I believe that there's a God, um, but I don't know if I could ever go back to church. And we were, the question was, why? Like, what, what's, what, what is it? And they're like, well, I've had sex before marriage and I don't think I could ever step back in the church. And in my, in my, I guess my initial response now, now living in the room of grace, like now, you know, being on that side of it, I'm just like, wait, that's the reason why you don't want to go back to church. <laughs> like, right. Oh man, right. I've done worse things than that. Like, right. what, like come back to church. If that's what you're afraid of, like, but what it is, it's like, it's like, it's that I'm afraid that I'm going to go back to church and I'm going to be judged. And they're going to say, when I say right. I've had sex before marriage, they're going to go, okay, well, we're going to need to wash you. We're going to need, you need to read right. your Bible every single day for the rest of your life now. And you need to like say so many how Marys and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that's the fear of the church. Like, right. you know, and that's it's a, like, yeah, I'm afraid of what's going to happen. I'm afraid of how people are going to judge me. Right. And what we're saying is this is completely opposite. It's, Come to church to be part of a church family who, who if you're just like, I've had sex before marriage, there's going to be people who are like, okay, yeah, me too. So what? Like, we're, right. <laughs> we can still do amazing and not, and not so what, like, it doesn't matter for your heart and for the good things of God. Like, not that God's going to reward you if you wait, yeah. but there's goodness. There's a better way. There's a, there's, there's. God desires more for you and the ability yeah. for you to experience that fullness of life that Jesus promises comes in restraint and chastity yeah. and in all things. And, and, um, you know, I mean, that's, um, that's why drunkenness is the sin. Yeah. Um, 
you know, and, and not drinking wine yeah. is not the sin. You know, drunkenness is a sin because mm -hmm. there's a there's there's a lack there. There's a um, an inability in that inebriation to experience the good things of God. You know, remain yeah. sober minded so that you can experience the good things of God, not so that yeah. you can never party on. Yeah, game, you know what I'm saying, like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I almost, you know, and I think the what the thinking was is like, well, what if I go to church and then, what if I want to keep sinning, right? Oh, like, yeah. and and the thing is, like, then go like, to Catholic church because then you could just confess. I'm yeah, right. no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. If you're yeah. Catholic, I'm kidding. <laughs> I grew up Catholic. I know how it is. Yeah, right. But no, it's like it's like you know what? Like that's okay. I mean, it's like because what what happens is like. As you start diving into the Word of God, and then it starts transforming and, your mind. And can we make a distinction between what if I want to keep sinning versus what if I just keep sinning? Like, right? Because wanting yes. to sin, wanting, is yeah, a yeah. little bit different. Like, okay, you can still come. Yeah. Um, you're going to be super uncomfortable after a little bit. After a <laughs> while, you're going to think people are judging you. That's not people judging you. It's your conscience. Yeah, it, <laughs> like, it's Holy Spirit. It's Holy Spirit saying, yeah. "Hey." Right. Um, can't keep doing this. Yeah, because that you know that's the thing is like when you when you sit in, in in a healthy church, there's obviously some very unhealthy churches there. Sure. But when you sit in a healthy church and you feel the the Holy Spirit and the love of God washing over you through the worship or through the message or whatever, um, I don't even think anyone has to even say anything about your sin because you automatically start thinking about it. Right. That's what happens to me is like. All, all of, all the, you know, the Holy Spirit is like filling me up and that sort of thing. And I'm, I feel like, and I go myself, I go, oh Lord, uh, like I totally sinned against you and I'm so sorry, you know. And it's just like, he's just that comfort that it's like, it's okay. Like, you know what? Let's get back up and let's, you know, you're going to stumble again. Like it's going to happen. But if you trust God and let, let the Holy Spirit just wash over you. At some point, and this is what's been true for me, is that at some point the sinning that I was doing no longer I don't have an appetite for it anymore. Right. Well, it's talk, not it's not me. It's like yeah. We'll, we'll have to talk in later episodes about yeah. whether or not it's possible to not sin. Oh yeah, well, that's a good one. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just yeah. just from the like, be perfect as the Father is perfect. Oh yeah. You know, like yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> well, because yeah. I have some, I have some thoughts on that. That would be great. Um, and I think I, you know, I'm trying to remember. I feel like I had this thought when I was, um, when I was reading, you know, reading through this, is one of the fears I think too is that people, especially who are new Christians or maybe are, you know, thinking like, you know, I think I do want Jesus, is yeah, but I don't know the Bible. Right. I don't know the Word of God. I don't even know where to even begin with yeah. the Word of God. And in the Bible. Yeah, right. Begin in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Begin by, but I always thought, this has just always been my take on it, is like, I mean, unless you're like a felon or something like that, but if you're not like a felon or like a bad person, I guess. Um, anyway, um, but you you can, um, I, I, for me, I'm like, get a part of like the children's ministry. Because they, oh, but, but even, they teach the Bible. Like, even if like, you're not at that place where you're ready to serve yet. Oh, yeah, Because yeah, yeah. we talk about that in, in strength, strength, and I yeah. want to make a point here. Definitely, yeah. Um, but even if you're not in a place in that place yet, um, you almost have no excuses nowadays because, like, I know people that are like KJV people oh, yeah, and yeah. stuff um, would would scoff at you and, and call you a heretic if you read like the Message or the Passion Translation. Oh yeah. But the truth is, is if you've never read the Bible, a good place to like. Even go go read the New Living Translation. That's an easy reader. Yeah. Go read heck. Go get the New Living Translation, easy reader edition. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Go get the NIV is easier to read. Yeah. Um, buy the Amplified version, which gives you multiple definitions for specific words in the Bible. Yeah. So read a a, a contemporary version like the Passion or yeah. the Message because. The, there's like the, the surfer Bible even like there's yeah, like, like the, so many the, different the ones. The truth is, back in the day, they didn't have long diatribe like explanations as to what the scripture meant. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Even Jesus didn't teach that way. Jesus taught in parables, right, so that they wouldn't understand. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, because he even would, he tried to talk to the disciples right. and they're like. 
but you didn't answer a question, right. you know, because he was at a whole other level. And, yeah. and often he would get them alone, and the twelve would be like, "You need to explain it." Parallel, yeah, right. The wheat and the weeds, mm. um, and he's just like, "Okay, fine, I'll explain it to you guys." Yeah. Um, but back when, when all they had were scrolls, they would get together in the temple. They would read the scrolls to the people. They would roll them back up and then go on their way. Yeah. And, and maybe that's part of why they didn't do really well with the old covenant. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, the you know hearts of man and whatever. Um, but the the Bible is not the Bible's mysterious, but it's not a mystery. You know what right. I'm saying? That's what like, it says in uh, Acts. Right. Yeah. And so so it points to a very specific person and a right. very specific thing. Yeah. And um, and a very specific good news that the king is here and the kingdom has come. Yeah. Um, and and it will be ushered back to earth. Right. At some point. Yeah. Um, and so you can start like right over there. We have NIV the story, and it's a story edition. Oh yeah. It's the the way that it's written, uh, the way that it's laid out is in the form of a story. Um, cool. So you almost have no excuse. Yeah. For not reading the Bible. Well, and think about Job. So I think about Job, and this is like I, I've read a couple different places that this is considered the oldest written like book. Right. And they're not even 100% sure, like, what who the author was. They think it was right. Moses, but... Um, well, they're not even sure if it's a true... If it's a, if Job was a real person. Right. Like, they, yeah. there's an assumption there, but there's no yeah. record except for Job. Right. And, and I, what, I, what I love about this is that, based on them, uh, based on scholars being like, this is the oldest, you know, this is the oldest book written that we can find as far as this goes. And we're not even really sure who wrote it. Um... There's parts in this where Job, I mean, he's got no law of Moses. He's got no scrolls. He's right. got no literature. And God is revealing stuff to him. Like, and I mean, right. he doesn't. Like talking have, straight to him. Like talking straight to him and also like revealing himself to right. Job. And I'm like, I'm like, so for us, it's like, we have that still that opportunity when we talk about meditating on and, the word. And it's like. And to be fair. Job had to have something of knowledge of God yeah. because oh, yeah. because there was this impression that you must have sinned and made God angry. Right. So there was this at least dogma, this teaching, this understanding yeah. of how you interact with God, even if it was wrong. And maybe maybe that's part of the point of Job. Like God makes that point. Like you don't know. Yeah. You weren't here. Yeah. You weren't here when I laid the foundation of the earth. You weren't here when I created man. Like, right. Like, you don't know. So, yeah. and, and, you know, and I love, like, like stand up like a man while, like, yeah. while I talk to you. Yeah. Um, and he even said, like, what I liked about that, I said, like, what well, Lord, was it because of the sins of my youth? I mean, he's acknowledging, like, as a youth, he may have had, like, some sin in his life. But God still calls him blameless. Like, right. that to me is a revelation right there. Of it's like, wow, like, and maybe we, maybe that's into the, you know, the age of accountability or whatever. But it's yeah, like... Whatever. It's like, I mean, so we can say, okay, we've done stuff as we were younger, and it's like, but we have an opportunity to be blameless before the Lord. Right. That's what, it, you know. So, yeah, no, I think that's really, um, I, but that's, that's the whole thing. Is like, I think, yeah, there's so many different options, not only of Bibles, but it's like, you don't have to get into deep theology for God to reveal the Word of God to you. Well, and, and the, the 12th didn't. You know what I'm saying? The twelve yeah. that hung out with Jesus yeah. didn't get into some deep theology. Uh, in fact, <laughs> in fact, they would have been um, not good enough to progress through their yeah. teaching of the of the you know of the old covenant. So, yeah. th at some point, they were like, "You're not smart enough to continue with this teaching. You've learned the Pentateuch and you've yeah. memorized it. Now go on your way and be a fisherman." And yeah. that's what would have happened. And yeah. Jesus takes them and doesn't draw them into some deeper theology. Right. Um, he lives with them and explains things to them and and, yeah. and recites scripture that they know. Yeah. Um, and then expands on it and and shows them miracles and yeah, wonders and, that and sort teaches of thing. teaches through story and yeah. Um, even if they don't get that he outright says, "Hey, they're going to kill me." Multiple times, and they're just like, wait a second, wait, 
Yeah. What do you mean they're going to crucify you at the end? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, how did we miss this part? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't even start his ministry until he's 30. Right. And it's like, if you're 20 something years old and you've like, you've messed up or whatever, it's like, you still have an opportunity to start ministry before even Jesus started ministry. It's like, you still have an opportunity to. And what, what's funny to me is, so Jesus, twelve years old, in the temple, yeah. teaching, yeah, and they're like, "We've never, what? we've never seen <laughs> yeah. this before." Yeah, still doesn't go on to become a rabbi, becomes a carpenter. Yeah, right. you know what I'm saying. So at at some point, I want to know more either, about twelve year old yeah, Jesus. What I, was he saying? I would love to know what happened between twelve and thirty, because at some point, either someone said he's not, he's he doesn't belong on the rabbi tract. Yeah, um, or he chose. To go into woodworking. Like, one of those two things happen. Um, yeah. Right. Which, which, if anybody knows scripture, it's 12-year-old Jesus sitting in the temple teaching yeah. rabbis. And yeah. rabbis being like, yeah, this dude. Yeah. You what, know? Where are you getting this? Like, Yeah. <laughs> um, and, then yeah. It, and then what? He's a carpenter. I know. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, so... Yeah, and I, I mean, I would love, I would love to have a conversation with Mary and even Joseph, and just be like, so what was that conversation like when you got home? Like, as twelve years old, right. now you can't be doing this. Right. Like, he's like, but why? <laughs> like, right. I really want to know. Should I be? Yeah, yeah. Um, <coughs> so anyway, I, I know. Um, so obviously, we we talked about like the, we have all these songs and all these things that we talk about. You know, God loves us. God loves us. God loves us. And this next section is then. How do we love God? Right. Um, so impactful. I do like the, the just at the very beginning of this uh, section. I do like this this quick story that you say. So the apostle Thomas, right? I think we call him Doubting Thomas, right? Yeah. That's what people talk, say of him. I, I do. I do like which. This. Let's just be to be fair. You know, yeah. Thomas was clearly like there's points at which he just doesn't believe, yeah. but um, none of them did. They all, oh, they all right. leave. They're just like, well, yeah. it is what it is. It's over. And then when <laughs> yeah. Mary's like, hey, he's alive. And like, he's not there. The angel told me. They're just like, uh-huh. what? No way. It's not even possible. It's yeah. Like, okay. Oh, you're, you're just. Until he shows yeah. up to them and they're just like, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. He just walked through a wall. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but I, I do like this where it's just like, um, you know, he, that he is like, on, unless I see it. Then uh, I'm, you know, I don't believe it, and then he sees Jesus, and then he finally believes, and then I love that it's Jesus' response to him is, "Blessed he who who doesn't see and yet still believes." Um, we would, I guess, translate that into faith, right? That's yeah. what we. But even like, but even so, um, even the way that so a lot of times wind in the Bible is converted into like spirit, right? right. And it, even with the wind, it's like you can feel the wind blowing in your face. You can feel the effects. You can feel... And you know that the wind is a thing. But you can't see the wind. Like, right. And I feel like that's that's almost the way that we um, that we think about Jesus and, and, and God and Holy Spirit and that sort of thing. It's like, we know that when we go feed the homeless, we stand up for the oppressed, we help the orphan, we serve in church, whatever. There, There is a wind-like thing that comes into your heart that goes whether you're a Christian or not Christian when you feed someone who's homeless or like you pay for someone's light bill for a month or whatever there's this feeling of like joy and right. like that's that's Holy Spirit and that's like that's one of the ways that I feel like I see Jesus and like I see God is is those kind of times yeah no yeah, yeah. Um, did we, and we talked about that right our ability to just see God oh yeah in Everything. Everything in nature yeah. and a baby's laugh and you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, Not so much the other other side the of the baby's laugh. <laughs> the crying or the poopy diapers. Yeah. Uh, which I don't have to deal with that anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I don't have to either, but I also I my wife and I'm in agreement. She does the poopy diapers and I do a lot of other stuff. So. Oh, okay. Well that's yeah. fair. Uh, yeah. Uh, as long as there's an agreement. It's there's an much. agreement. I'm okay with it. I will cook every meal, I will clean the toilets, I'll do the cat box. I don't want to deal with the poopy diapers. <laughs> nice. Uh, that's a pretty decent arrangement. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we start talking about, when we talk about how do we love God, 
we start talking about this, what Jesus is saying, this heart, mind, soul, and strength. Right. Um, so, yeah, maybe you give us a little sample. Yeah. And so, um, I, th- I think, I think um, just kind of getting to heart, soul, mind, and strength, um, I don't, I don't remember the last time that I heard a teaching mm. on that, just that you do it. Yeah. Um, and, and growing up for me, and when I say growing up, like, you know, from 12 until 30 something yeah. in the church, you know, I've been a Christian for 20 years and still didn't have this really solid understanding about what it meant to love God. Yeah. Um, yeah. and oftentimes it was met with, well, you know, loving God, um, mm. Spend time with them. Read the Bible and pray and tithe and, and tithe and <laughs> yeah. Go to church and and you'll be a good Christian and and you know and you're loving God and um and I've known people you know twenty you know Christians for 10, 20, 30, 40 years yeah and they just don't have this solid understanding and and we do that with new Christians where we're just like oh you made a decision decision for Christ you raised your hand yeah um, in church during an altar call and um, everybody bowed their heads and then you kind of get um, you know ushered into a side room or told to mm-hmm. meet at the connect table or whatever and yeah and you get a bag of like a Bible and like a reading plan and your next steps and yeah. um, how do you become a member of the church? And right. Yeah. Like all, <laughs> yeah. like all that. And, yeah. And instead of sitting down with them and being like, okay, so like, let's have an honest conversation about what this, what the decision that you just made, uh, or maybe have that conversation first. Hey, you know, weigh this decision that you're about to make, yeah. but regardless, you make the decision. Let's have an honest conversation about what you just decided and let's start talking about what it looks like to read the Bible and how to read the Bible and when to read the Bible and why we read the Bible and um, and that the the Bible is God's revelation of himself to us yeah. um, and is meant to lead you to him um, yeah. as opposed to just help you know who he is like it's mm-hmm. it's not an information guide as much as it is a, a, a an avenue for connection to God right yeah. and and so when it comes to like, okay, so love the God, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Yeah. For me, I, I couldn't tell you what that meant as a young Christian. Mm-hmm. Like, I just, I just didn't. Yeah. Like, I didn't know. Yeah. Nobody told me what that meant. They were just like, oh, you know, you just, you just love them with your heart. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, no practicality in that. And just. Right. It was like, and oh, so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And so I love um, one of the stories that I that I use in there for heart, and we'll just kind of go through yeah. heart, soul, mind, and strength real quick. Yeah. Um, but one of the stories that I use, and it's a story that I've heard preached numerous times. I'm, I'm sure you've probably heard numerous sermons on it. Yeah. Um, but it's a story about uh, after Jesus's crucifixion, mm-hmm. uh, Peter and the other some of the other disciples return to their job of fishing. They just they're they're fishing. Yeah. So Jesus is resurrected. Um, they're out there fishing. Jesus shows up on the beach and he makes like a charcoal fire and he starts cooking <laughs> fish over the fire. And, yeah. um, and and I've heard it preached that he's kind of recreating the scene from the night that Peter denied him because he's getting ready to kind of mm. reconcile and redeem Peter's denials. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, the, the charcoal fire would be the same scent that was present while they were warming themselves, mm-hmm. um, that night. The night before. And, the um, and, you know, and, and him walking with Peter and asking him three times, do you love me would be, you know, the counter to his three denials. And, yeah. um, and I just love that picture that like. Jesus doesn't just redeem situations in a theoretical stance, but in a very real, yeah, practical, you know, like viscerally, like I'm present in this moment, yeah. being redeemed. Yeah. Um, and so that conversation, you know, Peter sees him and he jumps out the boat and he swims to shore and he's like, "Jesus, I knew it was you." Yeah. Um, and then they eat breakfast together, and then Jesus takes him off and. And he asks him, do you love me? 
Yeah. Lord, you know I love you. And feed my sheep. Do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Yes, I love you. Take care of my sheep. Do you love me? Lord, you know all things. Of course you know I love you. Yeah. Um, then feed my sheep. And I've always heard it. So, so the, the Greek words there that are being used are yeah. agape and phileo. Yeah. Um, and during pre-show discussion, yeah. you kind of made this point and I, it helped me realize like, oh, I didn't go a lot into yeah. the definitions. Um, maybe I do later. I don't think so. But I, I, I should have probably in chapter three connected agape to gift love. Yeah. Um, but agape love is this. Oh, I do say it here. I say agape love is not a human love, although as Christians we aspire to um, to it this way. Instead, it's the kind of love that is necessary for loving your enemy. Um, it's this divine, mm -hmm. deeply, um, deeply divine, um, kind of no strings attached, unconditional, mm -hmm. um, transformative type love, right? Yeah. That's agape love. And phileo love, uh, phileo Philadelphia, yeah, brotherly love. It's this like this yeah. deep affection for each other, yeah, um, as brothers. And so I've always heard it taught. Jesus said, "Hey Peter, do you agape me?" Peter's like, "Jesus, you know I phileo you. Mm. Feed my sheep. Do you agape me, Jesus? You know I phileo you. Take yeah. care of my sheep. Do you agape me, Jesus?" You know all things. Of course, I agape you. And Peter changes his language yeah. there. And I've always heard it taught that way. Mm -hmm. And um, as I was studying for this years ago, um, and and I think I wasn't even hadn't even started writing the book mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. Um, I found commentary, multiple commentaries, and multiple translations um, that Peter didn't change his word. Peter kept saying, "I phileo you," mm -hmm. and Jesus changed the third time that he said. Um, do you love me to phileo? So mm -hmm. he said, do you agape me? I phileo you. Do you agape me? I phileo you. And then Jesus changed mm -hmm. to, do you phileo me? Yeah. And Peter was just like, of course, you know, all things, of course I phileo you. Um, and it just kind of makes this point that what, wherever you're at, wherever your heart is, yeah. whatever you're capable of giving to Jesus. Yeah. Um, Jesus doesn't expect more of that. Right. He just accepts you where you're at. Right. If you're capable of giving a brotherly love to Jesus, if yeah. you're capable of extending um, friendship on a very shallow level to Jesus, he'll meet you there and yeah. he's okay with it. Yeah. Um, and so when it comes to your heart, all of these things, like all of our... and and. I've kind of hoped that I made this clear that all of our ability to love yeah. is expressed inside of gospel centered community. Like gospel centered community is the place that we get to express and experience all three of these types of love, right? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, loving each other is in a community. Loving yeah. God is expressed inside a community, inside the body. Um, yeah. And, and, and we're drawn to Christ, to God the Father. Yeah. Um, in those expressions of love, those are expressions of love to God inside of that community. Yeah. And so um, there are, I think, other ways. But what I try and connect here is that, like, your ability to love God with all your heart yeah. um, is, is best seen... In the context of opening it to those in the body, yeah, and 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 accepting those inside the body, because in accepting mm. your brother and sister in Christ, you're accepting yeah. Christ. Um, yeah. And I, Matthew said it from the pulpit a couple of times. I've said it. Um, I've said it in men's group where the the value in me and Matthew getting together is that Jesus is present there. And Jesus in my heart communicates mm. to Jesus in Matthew's heart. Yeah. And there's this sort of reciprocation, mm. you know, of, of Christ in and among us. Yeah. Um, and when I open my heart to, when I open myself and I open my heart to those in the body, 
I'm telling God, I love you with all of this. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I, I almost wonder if it's like, um, I think this will be like more of the, um, the, the strength side of things, but I do, I do appreciate that, that definition between the filet and the agape just because it's like, um, it's almost like it's a whole nother level of love that we can't just do on our own. Right. We ha we need Jesus and the Holy Spirit to get us that next level of love. And that kind of love is the love that transforms people or, or it, uh, right. it, it like, it shows people, wow, I'm a messed up person and you've loved me right where I'm at. Right. How much more than, than does Jesus love me? Right. And it's just, it's, it's this awesome and, and, opportunity. Yeah. And with that, like, it's not that Jesus doesn't want you to grow beyond yeah. what you're capable of giving him. It's just that he meets you there and he kind of ushers you into this other place through that transformation. Like yeah. the whole point of transformation is to become like him, you yeah. know, to, 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 to look like well, uh, C.S. Lewis would say that you're being made into little Christs. You know? That was the nickname yeah. that they, um, the, it's an ax. There's a place that Paul went yeah, to. That's what and they Christians were making fun of them yeah. saying, oh, oh you little, little Christians. Little Christ. Which before they were just called the way. Right. And then now they're called Christians. So Followers of the way. Yeah, yeah. But now, you know, so it's actually like more of like an insult or like a joke, but then right. it stuck. So, you know. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, little Christ. Um, so next, next, so soul, mm -hmm. um, uh, this is, I think if you get, from what I understand, this is what separates, um, this is what separates us from like other created beings, right? It's like, sure. we yep. have this soul, like, uh, an animal will have a heart, will have a heart. Soul is, is this totally different thing. Right. So tell us about how to love with our soul. So soul becomes this really abstract kind of complicated thing, right? Yeah. And for the Jewish, they believed that the heart was um, where you experienced and expressed much of um, what makes us a person. Like they, like your heart was where you experienced intellect and emotion and will. Mm. Um, and soul is essence. And remember we talked about essence yeah. um, in the first chapter. And soul is the, the kind of the very core um, the, the intrinsic nature, the, the thing that makes you, you. So yeah. as created beings, the thing that separates us from, um, the other created things, cows, you know, horses, whatever, yeah. is that there's that, that thing in us, that, that, that image of God in us that is intrinsic to our, what makes our character. Yeah. Right. And so, um, yeah. So loving God with all your soul becomes this thing about loving God with everything that you are, like everything, yeah. everything that makes you, you. Right. Um, yeah. And, and whatever that is, you know, your ability to love your creativeness, your, like the things that are built into your character. Yeah. Um, there's this pastor named Matt Chandler. Um, he's the lead pastor. Fantastic. Uh, Bible teacher, um, lead pastor of a village church in Flower Mound, Texas. Okay, yeah. and he, and he talks about like um, God, he was talking about God's redemptive uh, ability or like what re what happens with redemption. Yeah, and and he makes the point. He's just like, um, you know, before I I was I was a curious person, mm -hmm. um. And he's like, and my curiosity was kind of focused towards all this stuff that just didn't matter. Yeah. Um, I would argue to argue. I was loud. Mm. I was a loud person. Um, <laughs> and I would just kind of like research stuff to research stuff and then argue it. And he's yeah. like, God's redemption has redeemed that quality. It didn't undo it, but it but it moved it into the sphere and realm of, of, of giving God glory. And yeah. so his curiosity is redeemed into studying the Bible. Yeah. So that he can communicate it to people for God's glory. Um, yeah. And that was already in him. That's the thing in him. And when, when he makes that shift toward loving God with all his soul, yeah. when, when Christ transforms him and the Holy Spirit moves him in that direction, he's loving God with all his soul. Like the thing that makes him him is directed towards the glory of God. Yeah. Um, and so 
we get to do that from a community aspect, from a loving each other aspect, as we connect them, we get to do that by honoring each other in the body with who we are. Yeah. So, does that make sense? Yeah, I think about, like, the the way that I was taught re- redeeming, as far as, like, the Bible goes, is, like, I, is the way I was taught about it was, um, like, if a woman's husband died, um, in, in the, I don't know if it's Old Testament, New Testament, but... When a woman's husband would die either from sickness or, or from war or whatever, um, she would then be redeemed by the next man in the house, yeah. the next brother or whoever it was, the, whoever the next was. And because if she isn't redeemed, I mean, she's, I mean, she's nothing. Right. She's got no title. She's got no home. She's got, I mean, she's stripped of everything that she has. Is and so when she would be redeemed, she would be redeemed by the next man in the house, and um, then she would be given back the what she was going to lose, and so, and that's kind of like a, is it the story of Ruth with uh, Boaz mm-hmm. and all that, mm-hmm. um, where you know it's like you know she's you know sh- she starts as you know Mara and she you know obviously she goes and and uh, and there's just a whole redeeming story there, but. Um, but that's how I kind of think about with us. It's like where, when we are, you know, when we walk away from, uh, Christ or, or we're, we're just now talking about now being a Christian or we're now following, want to follow Jesus. It's like, he's redeeming us. Like right. he's, he's bringing us in saying you're loved and you now have a place at right. a seat at the table and, and right. you've got the richness of, of him. And then I so I, that's kind of yeah. how I think about. He's kind of compensating for that negative aspect of whatever that yeah. is. Like you were missing all right. of this, but right. now you've got everything. Right. Like, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it be, and when it comes to the things that make us us, um, yeah. they're still there present. Yeah. Um, but it's Christ. You know, it's it's the work of the Holy Spirit. The transformative work of the Holy Spirit moves those things yeah. that that are in us that are intrinsic yeah. to us. And makes them more Christ-like. It makes yeah. them more Christ-honoring. It makes them more uh, Christ-reflecting. It's everything. almost like identity. You've talked about identity before. It's like yeah. whenever we end up chasing down sin and succumbing to sin, what we're really right. saying is we're 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 leaving our identity in Christ and we're identifying with whatever this whatever thing is. is. But the opportunity is then we can then be redeemed by Christ from that, and then now be right. with Him again. And so I think about what you were right. saying, like, with and that. that becomes like the conversation where I was like, "Oh, we should have a conversation about whether or not we can stop sinning." Yeah, if we view sin as a rejection of identity, oh uh, yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. that kind of changes, you know. Like, yeah. anyway, um, it'll be an interesting conversation. Yeah. So, so that's so that's soul, um, so, but I think that like loving the Lord your God with all your soul has a lot to do with honoring those in the body with who you are like yes like like whatever talent like, whatever you are yeah if you're a caring loving person if you're a, you know whatever yeah integrous person yeah, then you honor members. those in the body yeah as an act of glorifying god yeah with that thing yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. if you if, if <laughs> cooking is your thing or painting or and and yeah and those are like, like those we can get down to strength yes yeah, but i'm yeah, talking yeah. about like like the things that like cooking's not part of your character. Like mm, cooking's yeah, an see, ability yeah. that you possess. Yeah. Um and some don't. Some just stink at cooking. Like don't like, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Don't cook if you're not cook, cooking. Yeah. <laughs> um but but I'm talking about just those like you honor those mm. um in the body if if you're a person yeah. of great integrity, yeah. then you hold integrity mm. And you offer integrity to those in the body. And you God. honor them in an integrous way. Yeah. Um, if you are um, a person that is just, that's mm-hmm. like justice is in you. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, whatever those things, if you're a person like, yeah. and the Enneagram becomes this really great oh, yeah. place to look at those personality traits, those character traits that, yeah. and, and, and in really healthy ways, 
Um, we probably just lost some people from the Enneagram because it's not a cool thing, I promise. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> yeah. But but just from a personality perspective, like who you are, yeah. when that is geared towards honoring those in the body and yeah. lifting those up in the body yeah. for the glory of Christ yeah. um, so that God be glorified, then you're loving God with all your soul. Like yeah. You're loving God with everything that makes you yeah. you. So, yeah. so we're getting close. We're at an hour, so we can blow through mind and strength real quick sure yeah um, because i want to get to a point on strength but mind um i think i said that um and we just talked about this but but mind becomes this thing where you love the lord your god with all your mind by allowing those in the body to challenge you yeah toward knowing him more fully yeah and that's that iron sharpens iron yeah that's what you're Um, saying yeah that becomes that um that what what's the hebrew word that i it's a Shadan. Oh, which Shadan? Is, yeah. Um, Literally means to make, to make sharp, sharp and then to become alert or more keen. Right. Toward knowing God. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like become, like, yeah. and this becomes that, I think, what do we say? That it's, it's more than just using my knowledge and wisdom to debate you. Yeah. Um, uh, for the purpose, like, like there's no relationship here. We're just like, I know these facts, you know, these facts, we're going to debate each other. And, um, at the end of it, I can walk away and be like, Oh, that guy's not that smart. Like he didn't make a good point. I don't agree with him. Yeah. Um, whereas within community, if you're my brother and you love me and I'm your brother and I love you in the body and you're like, Hey Bruce, there's this thing. Like, I really want to Mm -hmm. challenge you on. I really want to, um, offer you this. Yeah. As an act of love, because I yeah. think it'll get you closer to Jesus. Yeah. I think that you'll you, you'll draw closer to like it'll it'll move you closer to God. As a as a an act of love toward God, I accept that challenge. Like I accept yeah. that thing. And that doesn't mean that I integrate it fully into my you know whatever my thought pattern or whatever. Because yeah, maybe I don't, and and and, yeah. and it doesn't matter. Um, but at least I'm thoughtful about it. I'm mm-hmm. respectful towards it. Social media is a great place to look at this yeah. falling apart between Christians. Yes. Um, and I mentioned I had a buddy um, this last week that brought some stuff up, and he's a man of God, and he's a he's a cops cop. Like the dude knows law enforcement, and he's yeah. smart, and he's thoughtful, a little sarcastic, yeah. likes a great whiskey. Um, <laughs> yeah. And. And we just had this kind of civil discord or discourse between each other um, on some stuff that he brought up, and um, and and for sure it was it was about riots and protests, and mm-hmm. and, um, and then he messaged me on Sunday and was like, "Man, I appreciate your willingness to communicate in a real in a respectful way. I appreciate your thoughts, um, and it's clear like you're coming at this from the position of a man of God, yeah. um, honoring me as a man of God." Yeah. And, and we need that. And we didn't call each other's names. And, yeah. and, and I, and I felt like I moved closer to God mm-hmm. in that interaction with someone that I've known for 20 years and haven't seen him in 18. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, um, yeah. And yeah. So that's the, no, I appreciate that. You know, that's, and that's something else that like when I am studying in Job is like, you know, Job is, is crying out to his friends, or he's crying out, and, I mean, he's obviously, I mean, just lost his family, his whole, he's right. been conquered by different people, and he's got, he's scraping boils off of his body, and his friends use, like, intellectualism, and right. and then they use, edu- uh, Bill Dad uses an education, and then even so far ends up using some sort of a dogmaticism, and the thing is this, is that, if you look at what they're saying to Job at face value, you're like, yeah, what they're saying is, is there's some truth in that. Like, what's some truth at what they're saying? Right. But what God, God says, Job, they were wrong for what they were saying to you. And it's because they weren't saying it out of love to Job. They were trying to teach him why he was wrong and you need to get right with God and you need to figure out what's it. He said, and, that's, and I, I can't remember the specific Bible verses, but it says something something in effect of like, you can ha- you can say all the truth, but if it's without love, 
It does oh, nothing. In Corinthians, in Corinthians. Corinthians thirteen, it's yeah. like you're a gong, you're a uh, ringing gong. Yeah. Um, you know, like you can speak with all the eloquence of angels, but if you don't have love, you. you yes. Know, yeah. And so I think about that, where it's like, what you're what what you're describing is this is that someone who's on the other side of the fence, because and and you and I, have, I think more of you than me. We've been very outspoken about the injustice and about the oppression of, of black people and, yeah. and and minorities. And we've been very outspoken. And I, I don't know about you, but I know I've gotten lots of pushback from Christians mm. yeah. because of my support of Black Lives Matter and the protests and the racism. And, uh, Not support for racism. Do you? No, 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 support, support against racism. Yeah, yeah. Racist. Thank you for clarifying that. That would have been really bad. Um, but we've been very outspoken advocates for for right. that for that movement. The biggest movement in history, by the way, from one poll says it's the biggest history since right. Martin Luther King. Like, and Christians will go, "You're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. Get yourself educated." And we're right. here going, right. "But we that's what we're doing." They're right. not. They're and, not willing to have. And a at the same time that they're saying you're wrong, get yourself educated. Yes. They're they're saying I'm being persecuted because the government is telling me I can't gather in a place of worship uh, because of COVID nineteen. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> wait a second. You don't believe other people when they're saying they're being oppressed and persecuted. Yeah. And treated unfairly, yeah. and that there's a system that has been developed yeah. that is that is not just unkind to them um <laughs> but yeah. but murderous to them yeah um but you want me to just drop everything and believe yep, yeah the government is persecuting you yeah right i know no like i yeah. nope our job as christians um when someone says i'm being oppressed is to stop yeah listen to what they're saying and then work to undo it. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's yeah. it. Exactly. Because Jesus didn't say, wait a second. What do you mean you're possessed by death, <laughs> by demons? Wait a second. What do you mean you've been bleeding for 12 years? Wait a second. Mm. What do you mean that you're a leper and you need healing? Like, he didn't look at people's affliction and question them on it. He, yeah. he questioned, do you believe you can be healed? Yeah. And they said, yes. Yeah. And they even said, help my unbelief. Yeah. And he did it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. he just undid their affliction. Yeah. He just undoes oppression. Like, yeah. he didn't ask me when I confessed him and became a Christian if my oppression was really that great, if my affliction was really that great. Yeah. Like, there was no qualifying factor for it. He just undid it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, exactly. So it's just. And How do we get on that? What are we talking about? Well, we're talking about mind, oh. about having a conversation. Oh, the it's, ability to just be challenged. Yeah. And that's the thing is that Christians, a lot of them are God, country, flag. Yeah. yeah. So you want to love God <laughs> yeah. with all of your mind? Yeah. Sit down for a moment. Yeah. Allow someone, another Christian brother and sister, to give you. Right. Something that challenges the thing that you've always thought to be true. Yeah. Find scripture, like like get in the Bible and be like, is this scriptural? Is what they're telling me consistent yeah. with the character of Jesus right. and what he did? Not what would Jesus do? That's a stupid question. Yeah. What would Jesus do? You don't know what Jesus would do. <laughs> right. But you do know what he did. Right. Because the Bible tells you what he did. Yeah. So what right. did Jesus do is a far better question. And then... Yeah. Let it move you toward God. And if the answer isn't something that you would normally come to and it's hard, that's okay. But let it move you towards God. Yeah. Just let it move you towards God. Yeah. If the thing that you're stuck on pushes people away from yeah. God. Right. And you. Yeah. You should allow that to be challenged. Yeah. Exactly. And that's. You know, that that was like, one of the things that I don't need anybody about. to tell me yeah. to be more patriotic. I served the military for twenty years. Yeah. I saluted the flag for twenty years. Yeah. And, yeah, right. and then and then I worked for another year with the Department of the Army. So like I understand patriotism. Right. I do. Yeah. I understand love of the nation. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I also am allegiant to Christ. 
Right. That's who I'm allegiant to. And I, I, it is hard to reconcile those two things when someone's saying, but I'm, but I'm being hurt. Right. Like Christ right. in me says, what can I do so that you're not hurt anymore? Right. Not, but the flag. Yeah. Right. Okay. We're all clear <laughs> that America is eventually not going to exist. And at some point we'll probably become, um, like if revelation is true, yeah, nations will turn against Christians. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like so, like your yeah. love of nation, awesome. Know that she will turn on you. Right. You know exactly, and that that was the thing that we talked about on Sunday, where I was just like, dude, I was like, I'm hurting because people right now, Christians are saying, I'm so proud to be American, where at least I know I'm free. Well, that's good for you. Because black people don't feel that way. Like, minorities don't feel that way. Like, gay people don't feel that way. They feel right. oppressed. Like, right. So they can't sing that same song that you can because at least you know you're free. Well, that's good for you. But there's a lot of people who don't know that. They don't know and that they, they're And free. I'm not saying don't be <laughs> proud of the good things. that, Like, when America's good, America's good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like, when America's yeah. good, there are things that... Um, we have set the standard for, yeah. But yeah, you like I heard this analogy today um, that says um, there are people that view Amer like there. There's three different types of people. There are people that view America as a child, like <laughs> as a as a, they they're a child and America's their mom. Yeah. And as a child, you think my mom can do no wrong. Right. My mom does everything right. She's the best in the world. Yeah. Then there's the teenager <laughs> yeah. who thinks yeah. my mom can do nothing right. Yeah. I can't stand being around her. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And then there's the adult who looks at their mom and says, or dad, it doesn't have to be mom, but yeah. looks at their parent and says, yeah, they messed up some things. Yeah. There were things that, but by and large, they were a good parent. Like, yeah. like the good things are good and the bad things well, like maybe we need to work through those. Yeah. And that's a mature view of your country. Right. No matter what country it is, that's right. a mature view, especially of America. That's a mature view of America. As an adult, you can say, no, you, you, you mess some things up. And now I'm in counseling because you mess some things <laughs> yeah. up. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. If you're an adult and you're in counseling and it's because of things that happened as a kid, you should understand. <laughs> yeah. If you have trauma, you should understand. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't just go away. Yeah. But you can still look at the good things and be like, but there were good things. Yeah. But there were good things. Yeah. And that's the goodness of my parent. Yeah. My country. Yeah. Anyway, that was a <laughs> tangent. tangent. But yeah. Um, all right. Very, I know we're uh, going a little. The last thing strength. is strength, right? Yeah. And so strength is um, this, this Jewish word or this Hebrew word. Um, that was um, miod, 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 miod um, apostrophe space od. Okay. <laughs> and and it it translates to this word that means abundant or exceedingly great amount. Um, and they they it was kind of this thing of muchness, like this physical um, force you put something into, like right. So yeah. miod is kind of muchness, like, muchness. Um, and and so like loving God is this like ability to serve things that you do like your giftings yeah. um and so I, like this is what i said when christ uh when christ said with all your strength the word strength or might means ability or great force he was saying love god with all that you're capable of doing and do it with muchness oh, yeah. this includes and is most clearly displayed in service to others yes right yeah. and so Here's what I wanted to say about that. So we serve each other in the body. Yeah. Um, and, and loving the Lord your God with all your heart is learning to love those in the body and then sacrificially serve them. Yeah. Um, and that is a great act. Like when you when you obey my command. Yeah. Um, if you if you love me, obey my command, right? So Jesus and the command that he gave us was to love each other. So when you love each other, you're loving, you're showing your love for him. Yeah. Um, so our ability to serve each other becomes this um you know sacrificially with muchness 
um, becomes this thing. But the thing that I want to point out is, especially for new Christians, we um, often they get saved and we're like, your next step is to find a place to serve in church. Mm. Right? Yeah. And they get trapped in this like cycle mm. of pleasing God. The only like, way I can be a good Christian is, is pleasing God. Right. I want to, yeah. I want to serve gr- as a greeter. I want to teach. And, and that's fine. Do that. But that should never be your next step as a new Christian. Mm. Your next step as a new Christian is to find a community of grace. Mm. The, the room yeah. of the room trusting of God. Yeah. Right. And, and, or trusting God, the room of grace. And, which John Lynch, that's not our stuff. That's John Lynch. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. But find a community of people that are, that are practicing what it means to love each other and learn that. That's yeah. your next step is to learn that. And then out of that will spring a desire to serve them. Mm-hmm. Like when you're in a community of people that are learning to love each other and you're learning to love and be loved, yeah. it will foster a desire. It will build in you a desire to serve them first yeah. and then others outside of your community. And one of the best places for that is church on Sunday morning. If you yeah. go to church on Sunday morning, serve those you love coffee. Yeah. Teach those you love, teach their kids. Yeah. Usher those you love to their seats. Yeah. But also pay their rent if they need their rent paid. But also yeah. mow their lawn if they can't mow their lawn. Yeah. Or take the single mom grocery shopping or watch her kid while they go grocery shop while she goes grocery shopping. Because yeah. shopping with a child is <laughs> Like the seventh ring of hell sometimes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, do I have to mark this explicit since I said hell twice? Oh, okay, so. oh, okay cool. I mean, <laughs> maybe. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm talking about the place. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. Anyway, so so that's just the point I wanted to make was like your next step isn't to find a place to serve on Sunday morning so that you can love God with all your strength. Yeah. Your next step as a Christian is to find a community that practices loving each other Yeah. so that it the Holy Spirit builds a desire in you to serve them and then others, and that is loving God with all your strength. And do it with muchness. Do it with yeah. with force. Yeah. Don't force people to love. Like, <laughs> let me love you. Yeah, right. As Bruce <laughs> Almighty, love me, love you. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, so that that's the point I want to make. No, I appreciate that. And I think, uh, you know, when you get to a point where you can do uh, 17 hours of roofing project and then another five hours of gazebo project, and that's, then a whole weekend of volleyball. And then a whole, yeah. That's that's the strength of the Lord, you know. Like, um, yeah. And sometimes we pray for that. Like, oh, oh Lord, give me strength because right. I am dying today. Um, but, uh, no, you know, I uh, really appreciated this chapter very much. It really broke down this saying that, again, we plaster on the church wall, but we never really dive into it. And so I really appreciate that. Uh, and next time, we're going to be going over chapter 6. And ending part two, we're already yep. like, man, we're like yep. two thirds done here, and it's called the second command. So we went through the greatest command. Now we're going to the second. Going to command. the new command, the greatest command, and now, boom, the second. Yep, command. exactly. And uh, and you're, yeah, you're not gonna want to miss that. So that's our show today. Um, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, obviously um, sticking with us through the long yep. episode here. But make sure you connect with us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to hear what you think about the podcast and what questions you have. We'll be answering questions as we go along. But for now, um, we'll be back next week. Next week, and we want to thank you for listening. Cool. All right, that's it. All right, see you next week. All right. All right. Bye. Thank you for listening to Fully and Share Theology. You can follow Bruce on multiple social media platforms at bpags2, as well as Justin Mercier on Instagram at justinmercier13. Additionally, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram at Fully and Share Theology. Until then, keep unfolding God's Word each and every day.